Hey, my Juju Bees, welcome back to the channel. How are you guys doing today? Today is Thursday. I like to call it Friday Junior. How are you lovelies doing here on this Friday Junior? Oh, my candle burn on. Um, if you are new here, please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I would be so excited if you did. I am on the road to 200 subscribers. My goal is to have an abundance of subscribers, but you know, we got to start small and build our way up. So right now I'm trying to get to 200 subscribers. So every hundred subscribers I get to, I'm going to do a giveaway. I did it at hundred subscribers. So when I get to two, it's another one coming. But if you are new here, don't forget to like, share, and comment. I just I already said that. We're going to be continuing to discuss ethics six. Um, voila. Without my ranch in the, in the shot. Or like this. So, how are you lovelies? Today I got some ketchup over here. Today I just have a cheeseburger that I broiled in the oven. Come on, somebody. And um, some french fries. I like ranch with my fries sometimes. So, I'm going to throw a little bit on here. Um, so how are you guys today? I can't wait until tomorrow, which is Friday. I had a real get on my nerves type of day. I have those more than I would like, but you know, it is what it is. I'm trying to find my niche. What I'm good at, well, that I can turn into a stream of income because I'm tired of working for other people. I'm just going to put that out there. So, those of you who know the touch and agree, touch with me. Come on, touch so that I can find my niche and I can manifest me something that's going to be able to financially support me and my family for generations and generations to come because that's how I feel. I'm tired of clocking into somebody else's job. I'm tired of supporting somebody else's vision that doesn't align with it looked like something flying that doesn't align with me and my own visions uh, i'm tired of it so touch and agree <laughs> so yesterday we left off where morgan decided to go to london and right before she decided to go to london my legs stick it to the chair, y'all. Right before she decided to go to London, she went to go see if she could find Messiah one more time. And when she finally went to Blue, she overheard a phone conversation of him telling Blue that he didn't want her to come and stop asking him. Basically, nobody. I don't want to share. Um. This mm. burger. It's a cheddar jalapeno stuffed burger. It's so good. Sorry. But she basically overheard him say that he don't want her there. And to stop asking, can she come? Because he don't want her there. So, she go to London, she said goodbye to Ethic, talk about how she had to find herself. And then the next scene is um, Blue and Messiah. And Blue basically busting the door like, what is wrong with you? She's like, I swear you are determined to just die alone. Like, you're so mean. And the way that you're going about this is so wrong. She was like, she's not mad. She's not holding any type of grudges. She just wants you to come home. And you robbing her every time with you, you meanie. He was like, well, he was, she, he was like, why are you 
Drew was like, why are you punishing her? So, he was like, because. <laughs> it's not funny, but it's Messiah. He was like, because she made me feel. He was like, I didn't want to have to feel none of this. You don't think I'd be thinking about her being with another man after me, having kids with another man after me, thinking about the man that ethic going to walk her down the aisle to. He was like, I don't, I, I'm going through it too. She ain't the only one that's going through something like Maybe it's bad and maybe you don't like it, but it is what it is. But that's all I got for Shorty because I tried to tell her to leave me alone. She was persistent. I tried to avoid her because I felt like I was wrong. Even dealing with her. But she was so persistent. She kept on trying to get me. He was like, and once I got her, it was over with. He was like, and now... She made me, before she made me want to have more time, and now I don't have no time, so now what? He was like, so she made me feel, and now I'm mad that I, I felt the way that I felt, and now I can't get the time back order that I need or that I want. He was like, and I'm selfish. He was like, and he was like, and Morgan loved me so much. He was like, I'm so selfish that he was like, the time that we would spend with each other would be too much. He was like, it'd be me explaining the stuff that I did, hashing out the stuff between Mazan and Raven. He was like, and none of that even has anything to do with us. He was like, and then I'm so selfish. He was like, and I'm so scared that I would let her, I would ask her to go with me. He was like, and she loved me so much, she would go. He was like, I would ask that girl to die with me. He was like, and because she loves me, she gonna go. He was like, and I don't want to do that to her. Like, I don't want to put her through that he was like i love her but i can't see it i can't see it. he was like and if you think it's bad or you think it's wrong oh well but that's all i got for shorty because i ain't i can't do nothing else he was like i don't want her to spend the last days with me crying and sad and he was like i don't want to do that i don't he was like so i'm sorry if you think it's mean or i'm sorry if you think it's selfish of me but it is what it is but that's all i got for you and her so she was like you're such a jerk he was like, well, he was like, if you don't want to be here, I get it. But I did, that's all I got. In a way, I understand what Messiah said. But at the same time, I felt like he should have given Morgan the choice. She don't know anything that's going on with him. She just think he just up and disappeared. Like, I feel like he owed her at least an explanation, like, as to why he disappeared. Yeah, you told me that if you wasn't here one day that I, that you was dead. Well, I need to, you ain't dead because I know you're not because you was talking to Blue. And I also know you ain't there because I ran into a and He told me that you was alive too. So that ain't the reason why you ain't back. You owe me an explanation and I need it right now. I don't care how, what type of plans you wanted to have. And I get it. Like if I'm dying and I want to set it up a certain way to where I do it the way that I want to do it. But you can't leave things unturned like that. Like Morgan is literally dying, okay, physically and emotionally without him. And I know she going to eventually be strong enough to pick up the pieces but golly like you don't want to at least tell me like all right shorty i'm sick and i ain't coming back i would have settled for that like I, i'm sick and i ain't coming back okay well at least i know why you're not coming back coming back it don't have me thinking that i'm unworthy or that i wasn't good to you or that i was a i wasn't what you wanted to be or you didn't pick me or you didn't love me like it it would give me some type of closure morgan has no closure and no explanation so she's putting one and two together and making six. You know what I'm saying? So he could at least gave her that. As much as I love him, so I hated the way that he did Morgan in this whole scenario. Like, I, I loved how he loved her from book one until four. But I was crushed at how he crushed her from book four to book six. I was so devastated. But, so he was telling Blue... Um, the, she told him that the way he love on people is messed up. He said, yeah, well, you ain't got to like it. That's all I got for shorty. And that, another thing he told her, he was like, I ruined her life, B. Like, I ruined that girl's life. So now I'm supposed to sit here and ask her to watch me die too? Like, come on, that enough is enough. Like, how much more damage can I cause to her life? And that's what he said to her. Like, if she died, I would ask her to die with me. Um, and then he was like, he told her, I will hold her hand and ask that girl to die with me. I lose my mind around Mo. It's better for her if I don't, if she don't come. And Blue was like, well, I need somebody else here to help you fight because you don't fight hard for me. Like, he was like, if Morgan come, I'm going to die. Like, so y'all just might as well don't even try to get her here because she's going to be the person that kill me. Not her, but seeing her and hearing her voice, 
That ain't gonna work. She was like, but when she called that one time, like you was about to go to her, he was like, I had a weak moment. Okay? He was like, as long as I don't hear her voice and hear the need behind it, I'll be cool. But that's it. That's only that's the only reason why I was doing it. I'm blue like, okay. Um and then he said, All I need you to do, B, is just seeing her is the thing that's gonna kill me. Keep me alive a little longer, B. Just keep me alive a little longer. She said, okay. She was like, okay, come on, asshole. Because <laughs> he's mean. So she um put him in a wheelchair. And I think they was going maybe outside or something just to get some fresh air. And when she bent down to help him, I like, put his legs in there. She cried. And because Blue has seen Messiah throughout the entire process, from finding out that he had cancer to deciding to go to chemo. And she's been there damn near every day through his chemo. So she was watching him die, okay? She's watching the chemo heal him, but it's not really doing anything. Like, he's getting weaker. He's losing hair. Like, it, it's it's just bad, okay? It's just bad. So she cried. She had a breakdown. And he consoled her. And so he said, I'm going to dabby. And when I do... I want you to remember this right here. I want you to remember what I gave you because I ain't never gave nobody else this. Ain't nobody ever seen me weak. Ain't nobody ever seen me down and cry. You the only one. I gave it to you. So please remember that. He was like, you have been an angel. I'm about to cry, y'all. Look, see, and I done read this book a lot of times. So if I bust a tear, don't go talking about me because I'm emotional. <laughs> I'm an empath, okay? And I be just like, even though it's not real, my heart just be so ting ting. I just felt it when I was about to say this part. But I'm going to go ahead and get my life. Um, he said, you've been an angel to me. And you didn't have to be. He was like, and. Um, he said, so when you need me, I'm going to be here. He said, I'm going to be the devil in you. When you need to boss up on somebody. When you scare and you need to reach in your chest and pull out a little bit of strength. I'm there. He said, you gave me heaven and I'm going to give you hell. So you can get a world hell be. Because you're the best man. He said, you're my best friend. So she um, hugged him, you know, crying hysterically because she couldn't breathe. She said, come on, let's get some fresh air. Now, I couldn't imagine watching my best friend die. I couldn't. I just couldn't. And I couldn't watch her endure something like this i don't know what i would do like i know i would be destroyed but blue has to be so strong because she has to be strong for him she's trying not to break down but can you imagine you know he's been with her through her whole entire recovery process because she was on drugs and she's been clean the entire time can you imagine the turmoil that's not only going through his mind but hers as well like having to be the strength to a man who has always been your strength like, as messed up as Messiah is, like, he's always been 100 for Blue. And I can't imagine Blue, I can't, I can't imagine the pain that this character had to endure watching a man like Messiah go through something like this. Because I was sad reading it. I'm sad right now talking about it to y'all trying not to let this tear drop down my eye. But Ashley Antoinette can definitely pull out the emotions from me. She can make you feel like you are in the pages with these people. And that's how I feel with this ethic land. I'm trying to tell y'all. So forgive me if I get to crying or something like that, or I get caught up in emotions. Okay. Cause it, it can happen at any given time, especially with this book. Um, so they went outside and they got like this little water fountain thing that's sitting outside. And so blue asked him like, you know, I'm sorry, you look good today. You know how you feel? He's like, I feel, you know what today be? I feel good. She was like, okay. Well, you know, I don't have to feel bad. He was like, I feel bad for what? And she tried to push him in a while. Well, he pulled her down in the water, too. <laughs> and she was sad. And she was like, you work all of my nerves. And he said, this definitely should be added to the list. She said, top of the list, number one on my list, Messiah. Um, I'm just feeling bad for my boo. So, um, so we go to... Now, Alani and Ethic are working it out. Everything is going real good in their relationship. Well, not real good, but I guess as good as it can go for them to be trying to work it out. And um, 
So Bella asked, they were going to church and They've been going to church and, you know, trying to build their family unit up. And so, Bella just want to go over to house because she want to see Henny. I may have just say how you try. Um, so, she asked for she go over. Um, could she go over... Uh, you ain't have to have the church. And the mom was like, well, we kind of just started. I was thinking maybe we can make some plans, you know, go to some bookstores, go up to the farmhouse, you know, have some friendly vacation. She's like, yeah, we can do all that after I go over there. like, uh-uh. And she's like, okay. Like, you know, like, why you want to get over there so bad? Because it's a little boy over there. She said, I guess I can push the road trip back. Did you ask daddy? Um, as she sat at the kitchen, she's like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have said, did you ask daddy? Maybe I should have said, did you ask your daddy? Like, you know, I'm like, oh gosh, maybe I'm, she overthinking it. Okay. Like, maybe I'm pushing it too far. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Like, hmm, hmm, hmm. So I had to come here and like, ask daddy what? And <laughs> he whispered in Alani's ear, like, I like that daddy shit. Keep calling me that. <laughs> Lord, send me an ethic because I'm just trying to figure out where he is. Anyway. I am. So, um, he said, ask me what? And then she, they started talking about the diet and stuff. She was talking about, he got her doing yoga every night. And, um, so she got to make sure she cooked the stuff cook the food with the right stuff here take these two thank you um and so she was like he was like so ask me what and she was like oh she uh, bella wants to know if she could spend a little bit more time if she could spend some time at nanny's house and i think like that's fine with me and then you know she like easy breakfast and then he like she, he she's the only woman who he would let yell through his house like he just was like she just belongs here I'm talking about she just supposed to be here he's still smitten with alani okay and she's still smitten with him. And she's also still playing the best mommy role in the world. So Easy came downstairs, came flying downstairs. She was like, he was like, good morning. And she was like, good morning, big man. And I go back and walk. He like, oh, man. You know, I'm like, oh. Like, she always catching me. I love me some Easy. So when he got back, he like, are you happy? She was like, very. You're a gentleman. You walk indoors. It's bad manners to run. Save all the energy for outside. So she handed him a plate. And then um, he went to sit down on the table. So then Alani kind of had like a moment. She was just looking at everybody sitting at the table. You know, Ethic was sitting down. Easy was sitting down. Bella was sitting down. And she was thinking like if she had met Ethic under different circumstances. Like if it would have been like, you know, he just met her and she still had Kenzie. And then they fell in love and then she just merged her family with his, you know. And then maybe love will be sitting at the end of the table and they all could be a happy family. So she just kind of had like a checkout moment. Because Alani has lost a lot. You know, not only did she lose a lot, but she does sacrifice a lot on a daily to love Ethic. Um I don't know if, you know, we all talk about what we would do and what we could do. I don't know if in real life if I could marry or be with the man who, or live my life with a man who murdered my child. I don't know if I could do that, you know. The love that's on these pages, that ethic pours into Alani makes me think that maybe it could be something that could be over time, but I just don't know. But she has that moment or whatever. Um, she just enjoys the time with them, but at the same time, she has that bit of remorse and also that bit of what if, you know, that we get. So she was just sitting there at the end of the table and then she noticed, I mean, she started crying. She didn't notice until Ethic asked her, like, you okay? And, um, she's sniffing, forced a smile, you know, saying, yeah. And so Ethic was like, Everybody get ready to leave in the 15 minutes. So he took her and snatched her and took her to the office. And he held her close and said, just cry. 
Just cry. If you need space from me, if you need space from my kids, no space. I don't want space. It's just a bad morning. She said, I just want this. I just need this hug. Love it away. Act like you always do. And um, he held her till she stopped crying. And he said, if not has time, we'll meet with him at the church. The kids can go home with Nanny. And that made Alani excited because she was able to see that he is able to see that she, he needs her. She needs him to be able to be his strength, her strength. When she's not strong enough, he need, she needs him to be able to be strong enough for her. And if she, he can pull his strength from God, then he can replenish her when she's out. So it just kind of made her think like, oh, my man, he trying. Like he sees me. He knows what's going on. So they went to church. You know, they went to the church service or whatever the case may be. And then after church, um, uh, they went to have a meeting with um, Nair. One of the girls, the church girls, her name is Alicia. Alani be calling her the church, the church hoe. But um, <laughs> when she saw Ethic at church, she was like, oh, Ezra. You know. He gave her a little smile. So he didn't want to be disrespectful to his lady. And she was like, oh, I didn't know you were visiting. You have to come in. And I can take you on a date or something like that. I like looked at him and he didn't say nothing. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not. He was like, oh, my lady. She's like, oh, I didn't know. And Lonnie was like, why are we still standing here? <laughs> like, why are we still even trying to hold this conversation? So, when they went into Nair's office, he told Bella, like, go ahead and get y'all stuff and go with Nanny. We're going to go in here. We'll be out in a couple minutes. So, they go into the session with um, Nair and... I think Ethic brings up Alani not letting him not letting him touch her or something like that. Is this the book? Am I am I the wrong book? Hold on, y'all. She definitely was cutting up in church. I forgot to tell you this part. She said, oh, I didn't know. Ezra won't be needing that love. I got it taken care of every now I'm taking care of that. She was like, oh, I, I, you two are together. I had no idea. She said that I was him or that we were together because I kind of doubt that there was any question about either of those. And that's what she said. Why are we still standing here? Mm -hmm. That's right. So they went into the office and, oh, so they were supposed to be practicing abstinence, but, you know, that don't really work with them. But ever since she had that miscarriage, it's been she had bled for like two whole weeks. So they was kind of like practicing abstinence on accident, but kind of on purpose kind of deal. Like they really didn't want to, but she really ain't been letting him touch her or anything like that. And so Ethic said, we have been. Lately, she has been. And then Nair was like saying no. And he said, she really hasn't wanted to be touched for a couple of weeks. She's emotional, crying, grieving. When she looks at me, she sees my actions, not my intentions. And I don't blame her for that. I've done some things in my past, some unforgivable things. Um, and he just, he's like, I just want her to be okay. And then she said, I'm fine, Ethic. I don't see that when I look at you. That's not what I see. I've just had a rough couple of weeks. I'm fine now. And he said, sometimes when she looks at me, sometimes when she looks at me, I just see the hurt in her. Um... And so, Nair was telling him, like, you can't erase who you were or anything that you did prior to being with her. Like, the remorse planted right there. He said, it's not it. You can't even sit two feet away from each other without touching each other. So, she don't, it's not that she doesn't want you. It's just that it's a process, you know. But she's refrained for a few weeks and now she's seeing you 2020 vision. But she still clings to you. She still loves you. She still wants you. Like, there's nothing in her that has changed even in the two weeks of refraining. She said, um, she remembers the old you. She won't forget that part of you. There's a lot of that part. The man sitting here has different intentions. And um, he might have started cussing or something like that. And then... uh. 
Oh, okay. I I think I was thinking of a whole different meeting or whatever the case may be, but um, they were just he was saying how everything is not a sprint as far as ethic building his relationship with God and being able to be the man that can support Alani all wholly, you know, as a whole or whatever the case may be. So then, um, he went on ahead. Uh, what's her name? Bella came in and said that she left their bags outside. And she needed to get him out the car. And so he gave her the keys. And he told mine, like, go ahead and go out. Like, you know, I'll be there in five minutes. And um, she said, okay, kissed him. And she went out or whatever. And so he asked her, like, um, he asked Nair, ethic asked Nair, like, you know, her parents, like, do you know where they are? Like, I kind of want to, you know, meet up with her parents or whatever the case may be. Because um, uh, he said, I want to marry her. And I need to, you know, check with her parents or whatever the case may be. He was like, and your parents, you don't think she needs, she should meet yours? And so ethic is, you know, the subject with his parents is kind of iffy. His daddy left him for dead. His mama done died because she was just addicted to drugs because her husband left her. So it's just, he, he, it's a sore spot for him. He was like, we're going to just go ahead with what we got right now. We're not going to worry about my parents right now. He said, I, all the people I need are in my press, in my possession at the moment. And so I'm going to stop right here because I think I'm, yeah. I'm going to stop right here. Um... He told, like I said, he told Nair to try to find her parents so that he could go ahead and let them know that they he wanted to marry her um, and kind of secure the bag with good old Alani. So I'm going to go ahead and stop here and then I will be back tomorrow. The weekends be kind of messing me up with recording, but I'm going to make sure I come home and record a video tomorrow. Um, a fun fact about me, I only have one daughter. Um, I wanted to have multiple children before I had children, but now I just only have one. And I don't know if I would birth another one unless my husband come without a kid and I have to give him one. But that's a fun fact about me. I just have one daughter and she's my favorite person in the whole wide world. My daughter. So don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching all my videos. I ask you guys, if you want to catch up on some videos that I posted, I've made it to 100 plus videos, so you can go back. I've been doing it for about a year now. So go ahead and catch up with me. Get to know me a little better. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I post a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys tomorrow, maybe. Yes, tomorrow, the same place, maybe not the same time. Until next time, bye my jujubees.